So ordinary differential equations are described as uh, uh, differential equations that takes this general form. So the derivative of uh, some variable y, which is a function of t, or it can be x or whatever, is equal to some function of y and t as well. Okay, so the uh, first derivative of y with respect to t is equal to some expression in t and y on the other side of the equation. Okay, um, so the, um, the, the part that we will look at here, um, or the methods that we will look at, are called a one-step method. It takes the general form, the numeric method takes the general form that the y at point i plus 1 is equal to y at point i. So the y at, let's say, t equals 1. If you would take steps, for example, in 1, so t equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So y at t equals 2 is equal to y at t equals 1 plus some function, phi, multiplied by some step h. And the step is the difference between t at this point and t at this point. So this is the step h, okay? It's the increment at which you increase the independent variable t in this case, okay? That's the general form of how the uh, numeric solution is uh, being uh, implemented, and that's called a one-step numeric solution approach. And phi, so h is the step, phi is called the increment function, okay? Um, so, Again, just when you look at this, the uh, phi is used to calculate the new value of y using the previous value of y. So you know the value at y i, you know the value of y at point t equals i, and now you want to get the value at t equals i plus 1. You get that as a function of the value at t equals i and that step uh, or increment function uh, phi. Okay. Now, the most common approach, and I don't know if you studied this in your undergrad or not. Many people probably have studied it in undergrad. It's called the Euler's method. And the Euler's method is using the following expression. So the first order derivative of the function with respect to t, this one, we call that f of t i y i at value um, t i. Okay, so t equals 1 or t equals 2, that's the start value. And then the derivative of the function at that point, we call that function f, right? Which is kind of the right side of the equation. This f is being used as the step function or the increment function, phi, okay? So basically, the Euler approach ends up being that the y at point i plus 1 is equal to y at point i added to it the expression on the right-hand side of the differential equation, the inverted differential equation, which is this side, okay, multiplied by the step. Okay. And the whole idea here, if you think about the concept, remember that the derivative of a function with respect to time at a certain point is equal to the slope of the function at that point. So the Euler approach is simply using that slope, the slope, multiplied by the step h, so h is the step from here to here, right? So if you multiply this by the slope, you are getting kind of this value, right? If this is, if you assume that at this point, the function is extrapolated as a straight line, then if you know the value at this point and you want to get the value at this point, you take the value at this point and you add to it the distance or the step h multiplied by the slope, which is going to give you this direction, the y increment, right? And then you get the new location, right? Of course, it's not, I mean, depends. If you take a very large step, then as you see here, you can actually deviate a lot from the true value. But if you take small steps, so you will be here, maybe a little bit above, and then the next time the slope is gonna change, come here, so you'll become here and so on. So if you take smaller steps, you are more and more closer to the value of the true function, right? Uh, so that the, you can imagine that the number of calculations of this approach, the Euler approach, is dependent on the step size. So if you make the step size very small, you will do lots of calculations in order 
to figure out the values of the function or to draw the curve of the function, right? Uh, or to uh, solve the differential equation, basically. So that's the solution. What the function that we see here is the function y as a function of t. So that's the solution to the differential equation, okay? So it will take you longer time to solve, but you will get a more accurate solution, okay? And in fact, if you increase the step beyond a certain value, the solution might not converge at all. It might give you something completely different from the original function, okay? So the error is a function of h. If you make h smaller, you get more accuracy, less error. But on the other side, you need to do more calculations to figure out the solution to your differential equation. Is it clear how the Euler's approach works? Yes? No? Half, half? Okay. So that's kind of the discussion of the error again. So the Euler's method, uh, in terms of an error, like any other method, has two types of errors, the truncation and the round off. Again, round off is just dependent on um, your calculation uh, precision. So if you're using a computer with very high precision, you are reducing the calculation or the round off error. So that's independent of the method itself. It's more dependent on your calculator or your calculation machine. The more important one is the truncation error. And again, similar to what we discussed earlier, there is a local truncation error, the error that happens at every step. And there is an accumulated error. We call that the propagated truncation error. That's the error that happens across multiple steps. Okay. And for the Euler's approach, um, the local error is of um, the order h squared. So at any point, uh, when you are doing the calculation now, the new value compared to the new true value, the difference between those is proportional to h squared, which means that as h gets smaller, it gets smaller very quick, right? While the accumulated error from start until the end is of order h. And it's always like that in most of those numeric techniques, especially the ones that uses linear approximation. This is a linear approximation again uh, in the solution. All of them, you find that the local error is double, or sorry, square the step is proportional to square the step size. And the propagating error is always proportional to the step size h, okay? Uh, that's for the... Um, uh, Euler's approach, and as I mentioned earlier, if you reduce the step size, you can actually get more accuracy, but you will need to do uh, more calculation. Now, of course, if your function is actually linear, right, so the function itself, the differential equation that you were trying to solve is a differential equation that represents a y, which is a linear function of t, then Euler approach is going to give you an exact solution. There is no approximation in this case, right? As I mentioned, the approximation in the Euler is that you are approximating the curve into steps of straight lines, right? Changing in slope uh, depending on the step. But if the function was originally already a linear function, then the Euler is going to give you an exact solution. No error in that case, okay? Um, and again, it's conditionally stable, means that it converges under certain conditions. We're not going to go into the mathematical analysis of the stability or the convergence, but it is depending on the step size. So if you pick a very big step size uh, compared to the order of your function, so the step size has to be smaller um, whenever your function is actually kind of has more curvature to it. Okay? If it has more steep curves, then you have to pick smaller steps. Otherwise, you will diverge. You will go away from the function. Um, but if the function is moving smoothly, then you can pick larger step size and still um, get a solution. This is a MATLAB code for Euler method, so how about you try it? So that's the code. This is just comments, but this is the part where you have the code and also the header, the header of the function. So how about you give it a try? You can either do it as a function, or if you want, you can write the script directly. And just uh, the parameters passed to the function, dy, dt, t span, y0, h, and um, the variable number of arguments. You don't need that if you don't use a function, and you can omit the part that does the check here. Uh, this is only just to give you an error if you pass wrong number of arguments. So you can omit that var argument n, right? And you can just put values for h, y0, t span, and dy by dt at the start. Define them with certain values. 
and immediately start from here and write the script without really defining it as a function. So you can get the solution immediately. If you write it as a function, it's okay, it's a good practice, but then you need to call it after defining the function you need to call it. People who are working on online, I don't know if you can define a function, save it, and call it. I don't know, I haven't tried the online version. writing this code, uh, let's try to solve um, D, uh, what a color, okay. dy by dt equals t over y. And uh, initial z, initial uh, value is uh, y equals 1 at t equals 0. So this is the initial condition. In addition to Euler's method, there are other methods that has better error performance. تمام? So another method called Hune's method, um, and it improves over the Euler. And the main improvement, as I mentioned, is uh, in terms of the error. So what does it do? Remember the Euler, when you get the new value, it's dependent on the previous value, right? And then this, which is the right-hand side of the previous value, تمام? multiplied by h. Now, here, we are not doing this. We are using the new value is equal to the previous value, right? And then added to it the f at the previous step and the f at the next step and the average of those. So rather than taking the step dependent only on the current slope, you take two slopes, the current, the future slope, and then you take the average. So instead of going, for example, if the function, as you see here in the figure, so if the, fu if the function is going this way, if you used only Euler, it would have been going in this direction, directly. Using this method, you will take the derivative here, the derivative at the end point, and the average between those two derivatives is going to be a slope which is not very much to the left and not very much to the right, somewhere in between, which means that you are moving closer to the true value, right? So that's the whole idea of this Hune's method, that you are using two slopes, right? And then taking the average of those, the current slope, the future slope, right? And then taking the average, so that's some value in between. Okay, so you are trying to get closer to the actual curve value, and of course you have to multiply this by the step, so it will give you a y value, right? Okay, now uh, this method has better error performance, so the one step or the local truncation error is, remember in the Euler it was h squared, here it's h cubed, the accumulated error in Euler was order of h, now it's order of h squared, right? Keeping in mind that we always choose h as a very small value, right? So when we say squaring, it means that it's even smaller, right? So a, the order of h squared is better than order of h because h is a value which is small value. So squaring it or raising it to higher powers means you are even getting a smaller uh, output or a smaller numeric value. So that's the, um, um, the uh, what did we say? The uh, Hune's method. 
Um, and it's similar to the Hume's method. Uh, there is something that's called the midpoint method, right? Um, so in this case, you are getting the slope in the middle between the two points. So rather than using the start slope or the end slope, you are using the midpoint slope. So you get the slope at uh, the current value plus h over 2. If your step is 0 0.01, for example, then you will get, rather than getting the slope at the current value of t, or getting the slope at the future value of t, so either t or t plus h, you are getting it at t plus h over 2 in the middle. Okay, So you calculate that uh, right-hand side of the ordinary differential equation, or what we called phi, you calculate it at uh, t plus h over 2, the midpoint. Okay, Again, you can expect that this is going to be close to what we did in the Hune's method that we saw in the previous slide. Okay. The general setup of all these one-step solution approaches using some kind of polynomial representation falls under what's called the runge kota method. This is a generalized method for solving differential equations uh, numerically. And the generalization form of that is that you have the phi represented as a set of parameters multiplied by a set of functions. So k1, k2, kn, and so on. Each one of them is a function of certain points uh, of your numeric solution. So functions at t and y at certain point i, okay? That function is the right-hand side of your ordinary differential equation as usual, okay? But the, the only difference between k1, k2, up to kn is which point you calculate the function at. So k1 is calculated at the current point, so it's the right-hand side at ti, yi. k2 is calculated at the current point plus some linear multiplied by the step h, some ratio. So p1 is just some ratio that you select, OK? Uh, and the y at the current location added to it, again, the some linear value or some ratio value, q11, multiplied by the step, multiplied by the previous function. So the previous function, this one, this whole value at ti, yi, which gives you k1, is part of what's used in calculating k2. Similarly, when you calculate k3, you will use k1 and k2. When you calculate k4, you will use k1, k2, and k3, and so on. So up to kn, if you do an nth order runge kota, then it becomes a function of k1, k2, up to kn minus 1. Okay. Typically, most of the approaches of uh, Ronj Kota uses a fourth order. So we have k1, k2, k3, k4. Only uh, four values of those functions, right? And again, they are calculated based on the equation that you see up there. So yi plus 1 is equal to yi. The new value is equal to the old value plus 1 sixth of k1 added to it. 2k2 added to it, 2k3 added to it, k4, and then all of that multiplied by the step h. What are the k's? The k's are defined as similar to what we looked at before. The function at the initial value, and then the function or the step function or the increment function at the initial value plus half h, and the output plus half h multiplied by k1, and then k3, Similarly, the initial value plus half h, and then only the previous one. So this yi multiplied by half h multiplied only by k2. There is no k1 dependency here. And so it's a one step. Each one of those functions is only dependent on the previous one only. Okay? This whole setup is called the fourth order uh, range kota approach. And it's widely used in most of numeric calculations or solutions of differential equations. Okay? Now, a more complicated code is going to come in a couple of slides that represents the fourth order range quota approach for solution. Of course, we're not going to try to do it here, but please try to write the code at home and play with it and try it with 
different differential equations and to see whether you can get the solution in certain ranges or not. If you have issues with that, uh, email me or come and talk to me. Okay. Last thing to mention about uh, solution of um, differential equations numerically is in most of real life problems, you don't have a single differential equation. You have more than one differential equation and you need to solve them simultaneously. Okay? In that case, once you replace the differential equation with the numeric representation, for example, using Euler, that's the simplest form. So you remove each one of those and you present it by, so for example, you remove the first one and your equation becomes y1, let's say i is equal to, what, sorry, i plus 1 is equal to, that's using Euler, y1 i added to it f at ti and y1 i, right, multiplied by h, right? So this is how we use Euler to solve this first differential equation. You will do the same for the second differential equation. So it becomes y2 at i plus 1 equals y2 at i plus h, f2, this is f1, right, ti, and y2, i, right? The step is the same for all of them. So for all of them, you use the same h when you are doing that solution. And of course, the time variable, the independent variable is the same because you are trying to solve them at the same points, trying to find y1, y2, y3, and t equals 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on, right? But the y's are different variables. You end up with what? You end up with a set of linear equations in linear variables, the y's, right? The y1, y2, y3, and so on, at every time snapshot, at every i, right? Now, if you have a set of linear equations, you can solve those set of linear equations using the approaches that we discussed in previous lectures for solving linear equations numerically, right? So, again, uh, uh, of course, for each one of those equations to solve them, you need an initial condition. So in this case, you need, since you have n differential equations, you need n initial conditions to be able to solve uh, the problem, okay? Now, here is um, the code, MATLAB code for the fourth order uh, range CUDA. Um, just for your reference, don't need to do anything about it, but uh, just for your reference, try to write the equation, write it as a function, play with the parameters, and uh, see how it works. Any questions before we move to the next section of today's uh, uh, discussion about ordinary differential equations? So what I described so far, you have any questions about that? So mainly we discussed Euler, and then a couple of modifications of Euler. Euler is the main idea. And then a couple of modifications of Euler, which is the dunes and the midpoint. Right? Both of them are trying to get an average point. One of them averages the slope itself. The other one gets the slope at a midpoint between the start and the end, between the first point and the end point after the step. Right? Both of them are going to be close to each other. They have the same error performance for both of them, uh, but slightly different values. So don't forget, error performance is just the order. It's of order h squared or order h cubed. But the exact value of the error is going to be different from one method to the other. Okay? The exact numeric value of the error at any point. Okay? Um, then we discuss the more generalized approach, which is the roche cotta approach. In that case, you are trying to represent your function as a polynomial of a certain order. The most common approach in the roche cotta is the fourth order as a special equation that we saw in the slide. So it uses only four equations, k1, k2, k3, k4. Each one of them only depends on the previous one. So k3 is a function of k2, k4 is a function only of k3, and so on. Even though the generalized form of French quota is that k3 should be a function of k2 and k1, right? But for the fourth order approach, they use only single step uh, relation between the functions, okay? 
Um, then you have the code, you can look at it and uh, play with it as you like. Now, remember when I started today's discussion, I talked about the step and the effect of the step on two things. If you use a smaller step, you get more accurate solution, but you end up with more computation. Now, in many cases, you are faced with functions um, that are peculiar in behavior. For example, you can have a function that looks like this. So it's moving smoothly, and then all of a sudden it does this, and then it moves smoothly, very smoothly, and then all of a sudden it drops, and then I'm not talking about discontinuity, because in case of discontinuity, you cannot do much, okay? But I'm talking about the slope being varying slowly in those smooth parts, and then you have a range where the slope is really varying very quickly, okay? Now, if you approach this problem in order to be able to get um, a, a solution that converges, you have to use very small step depending on the steepest point. So, for example, I would say that in this range, right, from here to here, okay, the slope is doing quick variation within a very small region, right? And then this is probably the worst case out of this function. And if you calculate your step based on that worst case, in order to get the solution over a reasonable range of the function, it's going to take you a very long time. So practically speaking, we don't use fixed step. We use approaches that calculate or estimate the step based on the current behavior of the function. Okay? That's what we will look at now. We are not going to describe how that is done in details, but we'll just touch upon that this is a general approach. There are two ways to do this. One of them is to use two different range quota orders and then estimate which one is giving you a solution that traces quickly uh, at every point, and then you change the step accordingly. And the other approach is by varying the step itself and calculating the error, estimating the error at every point, right? And when you see that the error is growing, you start using smaller steps. When you see that the error is not changing, you start growing the steps again. And it uses an approach uh, similar to the bisection. So it uses a step and then calculates the error and then halves the step. And see what happens. Does the error change drastically, uh, improves drastically? This means that I need to really reduce the step. If I half the step and the error does not change that much, let me use the bigger step. And then next, maybe I try to even double the step, and so on, okay? So these are adaptive methods. The idea here is to maintain the error under control and to make sure that you converge, but at the same time, you can create or you get to the uh, solution very quickly. You don't need to do unnecessarily too many calculations that consume a lot of time and a lot of computational power. Okay. Now, these things, I mean, just to give you a feeling, these things, does make a difference when you are really trying to numerically solve a problem, an actual practical problem in your research, because you go, and if you use, for example, very small step, you start doing the calculation of your, or the solution of your problem numerically over a certain range, and you end up with leaving MATLAB running for five days, 10 days, 16 days. And then after all these days, you get the solution. Oh, I forgot to change that problem. Now I have to wait for another 16. So if you are really doing, and, and you, you will feel that in your, in your actual research. If you are really doing unnecessary calculations, it can be very painful, right? So it's not something that will just differ in terms of minutes or whatever, no. When you are solving real problems, this computer can keep running for days, hours, right? So sacrificing that, that time to get a, sin, a single point of solution or to get uh, some single trial in your research, is, is, is really worth saving if you can, okay? So anyways, um, <coughs> so this is, as I mentioned, the, um, the function behavior itself can uh, mandate um, the avoiding using a constant step size and rather use an adaptive step size. There are two uh, ways. One is called step hacking. And that one is going to do, as I mentioned, do the uh, calculation with the current step and then trying the same calculation again with half the step and see the difference 
in the solution, if there is a big difference in the solution, then it's really worth from that point on going to stay with half the step. And every time you are doing this, current step size, new step size, if the difference between the two solutions is really big towards improving, then this means that I need to half the step one more time and so on. At some point, if I see that there is no change between the current step and the half step, I will try to maintain the step as is. And then even later, I will try to double the step and try the solution. So it's always trying on one side, right, halving, and then on another side, doubling. When you see that the halving is no longer changing the solution that much, okay? So that's called the step halving approach. The other approach is using the um, embedded uh, range quota. And in this case, you perform two range quota iterations of different orders. So one, for example, with fourth order and one with fifth order. That's the most common. Uh, and there's a function in MATLAB that you can see in a couple of slides that does this, okay? And they compare. If the higher order, there is always a smaller step with higher order solution of range quota, okay? So if the higher order gives you much better solution, gives you different value than the lower order, and the difference is significant, then it's better to use the higher order value. If not, then use the smaller, the lower order, and keep on until you get the final solution. So that's basically, um, and this is the more preferred method. You will see that most of the MATLAB functions are using this method, the um, embedded range quota. So ODE23, this is solving the ordinary differential equations, and it tries a second and a third order range quota for the solution uh, to figure out an adaptive step size. There's ODE45, again, same thing, but uses fourth order and fifth order. While the one that has three digits, ODE113, this is a multi-step solver. So this one is trying step halving and step dub doubling at different stages to see uh, what's the suitable step uh, size. And this is just describing how to use any one of those. They all have the same arguments, meaning of arguments and everything, only the implementation of each one of them is different from the other one, okay? So when you are using MATLAB, you don't really define your function unless it's a homework or something, but typically you use one of those ODE equations to solve a particular ordinary differential equation that you encounter during your research or during your uh, adventure for numerical calculations of ordinary differential equations, okay? Um, I'm not going to talk about, I mean, what each parameter means and so on. This is just for your reference. Better to go and try the function. Here is an example. And I want you to try this example because you are using MATLAB, so it should not, you're using MATLAB functions themselves. So it should not take you very long to solve these differential equations. So you have this um, two differential equations, this one and this one, right? And they are coupled. So you cannot really separate. So there is no differential equation in y1 only and a differential equation in y2. In many cases, you encounter these cases. So the equations are really coupled. They are not, not each one of them. So y1 is not represented by its own differential equation, and y2 you cannot separate the variable field. Okay? So now look at this uh, problem. The, uh, solve this differential equation. And the um, uh, I forgot to upload the M files for you. Maybe we'll not be able to do it now. Uh, yeah, I should have uploaded uh, the, uh, I told you last time I'll give you access to the M files that are used in the slides and I forgot to put this, okay. Uh, let's see, can you actually overcome? I think yes. Already, yeah, it's already, it's already, I think it's, it's uh, I think the function is already defined here, so you don't need, yeah, so go ahead. This will define the function, and this will call the function from the ordinary differential equation. So you can, you can go ahead and solve. You don't need the M file for this one. But you need to define the function, and save it as an M file, and then call it in the script down there, okay? So this part is defining a function, 
which is simply describing the differential equations that you see up there, okay? This one. And this script is using the ODE 4-5, so the ordinary differential equation solver, which uses the fourth order and fifth order uh, Rajkota to solve this differential equation that you defined here, okay? The first two lines are defining a function, and the objective of this function actually is to represent the differential equation symbolically. Yeah, so, so that you can pass it to the solver. Yes, this script, how we are calling it, because it's called yp and this one. No, no, yp is the return from the variable function. Uh, variable return the function is yp. Like in, you are calling it here. This solver takes a pointer to the function. The function here. Define him. Okay. Next time, get the laptops. <laughs> Doing the online thing is not going to work uh, easy for you. I don't know if I'll talk for you. You cannot define or save things, or, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you have issues getting MATLAB, just uh, talk to uh, engineer Ayman Ammar in electrical engineering or, uh, or engineer Mohammed Said in electrical. Unfortunately, we don't have TAs for the post, but I think they will serve you whenever you. Or we put a job on, uh, <laughs> on Omar to get you some MATLAB access. <laughs> what? I didn't hear that. <laughs> so I think, yeah, if you, if you need, I think Omar can get it from either engineer Ayman or Mohammed uh, Said, and then you can sort of do it. You have to wait for the same one. It comes sometime and then it comes another time. Wait, wait, where did that firmware come from? The firmware? The university has a server license, but it's very limited in terms of the number of licenses. When you are inside an university, supposedly, if you did the setup correctly, it should give you a license in the university. I think the number of licenses is maybe 100 or something, which is certainly not the grand and grand and everyone, most of the time, you can find the license. So, does it have any traffic system? If there, if there, if there are too many people using the MATLAB, yeah. does it stop? It, it, when, when you try to check it, it will tell you that no license is there. Oh. So, already the licenses are being used by other people simultaneously at the same time, it just gives you the Citrix is not working. Citrix? Uh, well, Citrix uses the same thing. Yeah. It takes you to some MATLAB on, oh. on campus and it uses one of the available licenses. Our license is checked out for DOM, but it cannot be mentioned. I had to at some point, many people are using the MATLAB at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think it checked our Citrix and MATLAB checking for license from public companies. That's what happened in Daniel, or at least what used to happen. Maybe they got it better, I don't know. What's the figure on the system? So the left figure is y1 and y2 <laughs> as a function of t. <laughs> so both of them are a function of t. So this is the solution for each one, OK? Here, it's y1 versus y2. So if you draw those two uh, variables, they will look like not a function, of course, right? They will look like this. That's why they call this the uh, uh, predator pre. So they are chasing each other. And that's the predator pre. So any two functions would have the same value? No, no, no. Because these are common. Because uh, the first differential equation has both y1 and y2. And the second, and not only just common, they are multiplicatively common. You have y1 times y2. That's why you end up with this. Uh, what do you call it? It's not a circuit. It's a closed diagram, right? A closed loop diagram. Okay. Anyone uh, was able to. Come on, these are like four. I'm fine. This is. 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 I'm f
almost no change in the slope here, and all of a sudden in a small range, you have big change of the slope, and then stays without that much change in the slope, and then here you have another faster change of slope, and so on, right? And if you try to solve those, so for example, uh, can you change this? I don't know, do you know how to do the uh, time, like time stamping at the start of the code, time stamping at the end of the code? You can ask that lab to print a time stamp at the start of the code execution, and then when it finishes, it prints a time stamp. So you know how long the code took to execute, right? So try to use different ODE solvers and see which one performs better in this situation. And if you use Euler in this, you will see that if you use a larger step, it will be very quick, but it will not converge. It will not give you a solution. And if you use a very small step, it will give you a reasonable solution, but it will take really much longer compared to the ODE 4.5. Okay? So a nice thing to do with this is to replace the ODE 4.5 with Euler solver for these two uh, simultaneous uh, equations, okay? And see how it performs in this case. Actually, I'll put this for you as an assignment. It's a nice assignment because the equations are coupled. So you will need to think a little bit how to represent Euler in this case. You have y1 and y2, both of them in the same equation, right? The first equation and the same. In the second equation, you have y1 and y2. So how you implement the Euler in this case is a nice exercise for you, OK? So yeah, it's a good idea to give it to you as an assignment. <laughs> Any questions? Again, uh, just um, another part that has to do with MATLAB and what, what kind of options you can pass to uh, the solvers. Best thing to do these things is to try them and to read the help of the functions that you are using uh, for the solvers. But this is just um, a pointer for you that this is an important uh, thing. Okay, And uh, this is uh, the representation of what happens in the... Um, uh, multi-step approach so it shows you that in the multi-step approach um, you one of the ways of doing the multi-step approach is to use a predictor and then a corrector so I predict that the new value uh, is dependent on the previous value and then the typical phi that we have multiplied by double the step and then the corrector part is going to take the new value from the, this is the new from the one before the previous. So this is a two step. That's why you have two H here, right? And then in this case, you are using for the corrector, you are using new value from just previous value and um, a midpoint approximation, right? And then you use this, you use this, you see the difference in the solution. This is gonna use a smaller step. This is using double step. This is using half the step. And then you try to see which one is gonna give you, uh, not which one, you try both of them and you see if the, there's a big difference in the output that you get, then it means that uh, half the step is what you should go for. If there's not that much difference, then you keep working with double the step because you can quickly move across the solution without losing that much accuracy. Okay. So if you use this one, you go very quickly from one point to the other, as you see here in the figure. If you use this one, you go very small steps from one point to the other, okay? Now, there is one case where you have a differential equation with dual personality. So part of the equation is varying slowly, and another part of the equation is varying very quickly, which means that the slope is going to be changing very quickly according to that part. An example here is an equation that combines linear exponential with very large negative value and exponential with small negative value, right? So this equation is composed of parts that changes very quickly and parts that changes in a slower way, okay? And in order to deal with this, they call this the stiffness of the equation. So if an equation has this property, they call this a stiff equation. 
And again, there are approaches uh, to do better performance in terms of uh, solution, not using the classical adaptive step, but some other variations of that. And MATLAB has special functions for those, uh, such as the ODE 15S, S for step, the ODE 23, the ODE 23T, and the ODE 23TB. All of these are uh, good functions to solve numeric uh, differential equations. If you notice that your equation has this characteristic, that it co it's composed of paths that changes in the slope very quickly and other paths that changes slowly in the differential equation, okay? So the whole idea here is, again, you need to kind of, when you are you're solving your general differential equation numerically, you need to kind of have some sense which approach is better right now. Because it really can make a big difference in terms of getting the answer that you want within a very reasonable time and with good accuracy, right? And in many cases, the real problems that you're dealing with are really complicated and you have to calculate over a range which is really big, a range of values which is really big, not really a, just a, from one to 10 or anything like that. If you're solving real life problems, you have to go over ranges with much more uh, number of points. That's it uh, for the ordinary differential equations. Do you have any questions? I have posted uh, all the slides until today. Sorry for being late in doing this, but I managed to put everything on Blackboard already. You have also the, your first assignments. Very simple. First couple of questions about modeling. So it describes a certain problem and it requires you to model that problem, write it in equations. And then the second, uh, the, sorry, the second half, which is uh, question three and four, are uh, simple programming ones that, one for the LU factorization and another one for the um, for the iterative solution of linear equations. And the equations are very simple. Uh, like one of them, I think, is three by three and the other one was like four by four. So they are really simple, not really a large set of equations or anything. So just to get you practicing, especially the last two, to get you practicing on using MATLAB. Um, you can just use the MATLAB functions. You don't need to build a whole new function at this stage. If you want to do LU factorization, figure out which, what is the correct function and do the factorization. Show me the factors. And then after doing the factorization, show me the steps on MATLAB code to how to solve until you get the um, solution to the linear equations. So the values of X. Similarly, for the iterative approach. If you have a function that does the iterative directly, do it. If you don't, then you need to need to write your own steps in, in MATLAB, okay? So I'm not asking you to write things from scratch if you have the solution directly in MATLAB, okay? Uh, that's it. Any